five members to put on a witness? We have one witness to put on the judge. Okay. Mr. Pryford. resource permit is? Sure. Part 4373 um, regulates construction, alteration, or operation of surface water management systems and dredging and filling in wetlands. The ERP program is the permit that's in place to regulate this. And your duties include processing and evaluating those permits? Yes. What are the statutory um, requirements or what statutes establish the requirements for ERPs? Chapter 273. Chapter 373. That would be part four of that chapter? Correct. And do those statutes give the authority to the department to issue and deny ERP permits? Yes. Okay. Has the department adopted rules that govern the issuance and denial of ERP permits? Yes. Where are those rules found? 62 through 30. Does, has the department been given authority to uh, authorize the use of state lands if the applicant's activity is proposed to uh, conduct activities in the state lands? Yes. And where is the authority for that? Benefit? In 1821. Can you tell us uh, what the applicant's handbook is? Uh, the applicant's handbook is a, a manual adopted by rule to assist applicants um, understand the rules rules, standards, and criteria to apply for an ERP. Is that adopted by rule? It is. Okay, so it's incorporated into Chapter 62. Is that something you use as part of your duties in evaluating the ERP? Yes. Are you familiar with the Sable Trail Project? I am. And how so? I am the project manager for the department for the environmental resource permit for you. Okay. The, the project uh, spans multiple districts, is that correct? Correct. Are you in charge of the project for all of those districts or just for your district? All of the districts. Uh, we've already had a little bit of testimony, but can you tell us what a pre-application meeting is? Um, a pre-application meeting is a meeting held prior to an applicant's submittal of the environmental resource permit. We generally go over um, things that we're looking for in the application, um, just general project criteria and process flow. Okay. Um, you, you were here when Mr. Dixon testified, correct? Correct. Uh, he testified there were numerous meetings, pre-application meetings? Yes, there were numerous meetings. Between the department and Sable Trail? Yes. As a result of those meetings, um, what kind of activities did the department engage in prior to the application meetings? Uh, we commenced doing uh, on-site evaluation of the wetland delineations and uh, mitigation scoring. Okay. As a result of the activities that were taken by the department and the Sable Trail in those pre-application meetings, did the project change at all? It did. Okay. Uh, can you just give me an idea of a, a couple of types of changes that the occurred? Department staff went on site, were evaluating the quality of the wetland systems and recommended avoidance measures when appropriate. Uh, during those times, uh, Sable Trail was realigning the project to address our recommendations. You were involved in, um, well, let me ask you, did, did Sable Trail ultimately submit an ERP application? Yes, they did. Okay. And that, that came in to you? Yes. Okay. And um, can we find, 
just briefly, just to confirm that this is, we're all talking about the same thing. The uh, Joint Exhibit 1 should be binders 1, 2, and 3. That's it? Okay, so um, when this uh, application was received, did the department review it? We did. Okay. Can you tell me what, in, in general terms, from our perspective, the project involves? It's a uh, natural gas pipeline approximately 230 miles. It includes a mainline route from the Georgia-Florida border down to the central Florida hub in Osceola County, and it includes two laterals, the County Lateral and Hunters Creek Lateral, um, three compressor stations, and three MNR stations. And um, in terms of the aspect of the project that's regulated, can you tell us what that is? Uh, well, all aspects of the construction of the pipeline are regulated under the ERP project. Those portions that are in the in wetlands and the surface waters? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the project as presented, did it require the applicant to obtain state land authorization? Yes. And, and why was that? They have uh, four crossings of state-owned submerged lands that will require a public utility permit. Can you give a brief description of what the initial route, uh, review process involved? Well, the initial review started in the pre-application meeting, again, going over the wetland delineations for accuracy um, and uh, conducting a review of the mitigation scores, the um, impact scores. We, we conducted that after we received the application. We went through, during the pre apps we also addressed, as I said, stated before, um, items that Sable Trail could do to reduce and eliminate impacts. Um, we, we looked at the state lands crossings, um, generally those were the major issues. Okay. Stormwater criteria also addressed. Can you tell me what a, a, a completeness review is? A completeness review, generally we go through the criteria for issuance of a permit to determine whether all aspects have been met. And, and after reviewing the initial application that was submitted by Sable Trail, um, did you find that the application was complete? It was not. And in response to that, what was the department's action? We drafted a request for additional information. Okay. Before we get to that, um, when an application like this comes in, does the department provide copies of it to other interested parties? Yes, we are required to copy the Department of State, Fish and Wildlife, the Department of Economic Opportunity, the core, and in this case, we copy the affected water management districts. Okay. And um, what, what's the purpose of doing that? Um, we're required by statute for some of the coordination, and with the water management districts, some of the pipeline is going through some of their permitted areas and conservation areas. We wanted to get any communication from them. Uh, did you provide copies uh, to any of the internal components of DEP? Yes, we provided copies to uh, FGS and to each of the uh, district offices that have, where the project crossed. When you refer to FGS, what do you mean? Florida Geological Survey. Now, in terms of putting together the RAI, um, did you receive um, comments from FGS that were incorporated into the RAI? Yes, we received initial comments from FGS about impacts to car features, and they were incorporated into the REI. Could you put that your floor? Okay. Ms. Prather, let me hand you uh, what's been marked as Joint Exhibit 2. If you would turn, I believe it's to Tab 2. Tab two. And can you identify what that document is? That appears to be our first request for additional information. Okay. Well, while you have it open, I want to ask you a couple of questions just to clarify um, things. In the, in the RAI, on page 2, uh, under Swan County, it states that wetland lines delineated appear to be incorrect. So the question to you is, 
during the course of this project, did the department go out and verify all wetland delineations that had been proposed by Central Trail? Yes. In the RRI, RAI on uh, page 3, it's 2-3, the letter refers to a UMAM score. Can, can you tell me what a UMAM score is? Uh, UMAM refers to the Uniform Mitigation Assessment Methodology. Um, it's a standardized procedure for determining um, the ecological values and functions of wetlands and surface waters, and also the, to determine the amount of mitigation needed. And during the course of this uh, project, were there numerous UMAM evaluations done? Yes. One for every wetland that was impacted? Yes. One for every wetland that was going to be part of the group. Yes. And with respect to those UMAM scores, did the department field verify uh, every one of those UMAM uh, submissions that were received? Yes. On page five of that document, there's a heading that says elimination and reduction of impacts. So why are we asking about elimination and reduction of impacts? Um, a demonstration of elimination and reduction of impacts is one of the criteria for issuance of the ERC. And you, you have to demonstrate that before you can consider mitigation, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, also under this heading, uh, there's a discussion about uh, karst areas. Do you see that? Um, yes. And so, in this section, did the department ask for additional information from Sable Trail concerning uh, karst mitigation and perhaps realignment of the pipeline? Yes. Were some portions of the pipeline actually realigned? Yes, they were. On page 2-8 uh, of that document, there's a mention of secondary impacts. You see that? Yes. What are secondary impacts? Uh, secondary impacts are those impacts um, from permitted activities that occur to adjacent wetlands. And so this was asking for additional information on uh, secondary impacts caused by the project? Correct. There's also um, discussion in there about cumulative impacts. What, what's the difference between secondary and cumulative impacts? Cumulative impacts are impacts associated that you do a basin analysis of impacts. Mm -hmm. um, if your mitigation is occurring within the basin, those cumulative impacts are assumed to be met. If your mitigation is occurring outside of the mitigation basin, you may have to do a cumulative impact analysis. So, um, in response to this um, request for additional information, did Sable Trail provide additional information? They did. Okay. And can you pull out the uh, binder, well, okay, top three, you know, four, five, six, and seven? That is the additional information they provided in response to the request for additional information. Correct. Correct. In, in that lengthy response, did they um, 
provide information that was requested as part of the uh, as part of the REI. Did uh, it did the information include uh, a, a cars mitigation plan? Yes. Was the information about uh, received in, in response in this um, in this response to the request for additional information that related to geology and karst areas was was that provided to FGS? It was. Okay. And it was provided to other entities as well. The the documents. Correct. Okay. Uh, did this response result in a finding that the application was complete? It was not complete. Okay. Let me uh, ask you to look at binder 8. Joint exhibit 4 is that can you tell me what joint exhibit 4 is there? Joint exhibit 4. Oh, I'm sorry, that is the second REI. Yes. So that's... Our second letter requesting additional information. Okay. And uh, does that REI ask for additional information about impingement on karst areas? Yes. And where did the... Uh, Questions concerning cars mitigation uh, come from that were included in the RIA. Those came from our FGS staff. Now, you heard um, testimony a few moments ago um, from um, Tom Edwards. Were you here when he testified? And he testified uh, that he sent you some documentation. Is that correct? That's correct. And did you receive some documentation from Tom Edwards? I did. Okay. And what did you do with that information? I forwarded that information to our FGS staff. And with respect to uh, his testimony that if information, he didn't put information in the record. The information was in our staff file. It was not uploaded to our internet at the time. And why was that? I generally uh, just keep a local record of emails during the permitting process so as not to put too much information on the internet um, because we're also using those files online to review the project. Okay. And um, in terms of the joint exhibits that we have today, which is the, the record we're relying on, is that information in that record? It is. It's in joint exhibit 11. Okay. So let me show you Joint Exhibit 11 544. Is that it? That's yeah, 544. Is yes. that one of the documents? That's one of the documents that was emailed. Okay. And then let me show you Exhibit. In the same exhibit, uh, page number 11 631. Can you that? Yes, that is the document that Tom Edwards copied us. You're not a geologist, are you? I'm not. And so, do you feel like you did the appropriate thing with the information Mr. Edwards provided? Yes, I forwarded on to our staff. So, objection as to whether she felt like she did the right thing. Agency employee knows as, as a formal follow In that form, it's probably not a relevant question. Excuse me? In, your, in that form, it was probably not a relevant question. Okay. I have actually a, a few more uh, communications concerning Mr. Edwards. Uh, and these are also in joint uh, exhibit 11, 11 1841. You recognize that document? Yes. 
I do. And what is that? It's an email from Tom Edwards. Okay. And it also involves Mr. Guy Means. Do you know who Guy Means is? Yes, he's a geologist at FGS. Okay. So you provide information to him? Yes, I forward them all and then, information. Um, 11 1848 and 49. Yep. And what is that? Those are additional emails from Tom Edwards that are in the file. Okay. And 11 1889. Yes, that appears to be a duplicate copy of the okay. other email. It goes 1889 through 1891, it looks like. Is that correct? 1892. That's correct. Yeah, it goes on 1893. And then. Tom Edwards. And what's the base number then at the bottom? 1946. Okay. I'm going to include an attachment that's on page 1947 through 2034. So all of the documents that we just discussed all the emails and the attachments. Did you forward all of those to FGS? Yes, I did. Okay. Thank you. Can you find me five and eight? So, uh, can you tell me what uh, volumes eight and nine and ten, the first half of ten, involves? Eight includes our second request for additional information and their response. Nine is there more of their response. Material uh, provide the information requested in our uh, second REI? Yes. Okay. And was there additional information included in their response related to the sensitive karst areas that the department had uh, requested information on? Yes. Okay. Including a revised karst mitigation plan? Yes. Did you provide that information to FGS? I did. Okay. And after that, did you get any further comments or issues raised by FGS? Nope. They uh, sent an email to us indicating that that cars mitigation plan had satisfied their questions. At that point, was the was the application complete? It was not. Okay. And what remained to be done? Uh, there are some minor details about the mitigation. Um, just picking the final mitigation bank and actually reserving the credits from the mitigation banks. Can you find the plug for me? Okay. And if you would look at Joint Exhibit 8 in there. Actually, 7. Look at 7 first. And what is Exhibit 7? 7 is the third request for information. And under that, what, what are the remaining issues that need to be resolved? Um, uh, they need to provide the revised tentative plan and including the banks that they were going to be using and the 
reservation letter from one of those banks. Okay. And uh, then if you flip to the next exhibit, joint exhibit eight. Can you tell me what that is? That was the response to our request, including um, some revised tables and letters of reservation. Okay. And did those letters of re reservation cover all of the needed credits uh, to cover impacts to weapons? Yes, they did. Okay. At this point, um, did that complete the application? That did, in fact, complete the application. And, and by complete, you mean all the information necessary to process the permit was there? Correct. And. At that point, did the department review all of the information that had been submitted to see whether or not the permit should be issued or denied? Yes, we did. And in terms of um, the criteria the department uses to, to perform that task, where do you find this criteria? In the applicant's handbook. Okay. And so how does the process work in terms of the review? We go through the uh, environmental consideration section of the applicant's handbook, looking at elimination and reduction of impacts. Um, have they provide reasonable assurance that they were not going to adversely in impact fish and wildlife and their habitats? We looked at short-term, in this case, short-term water quality considerations, such as appropriate best management practices for their construction activities. And then you look at the, the seven criteria of the public interest test to make sure they've been addressed. And so, did the department do all that? Okay. In terms of the uh, public interest test, uh, did you, um, what, how did you review the, public, the effect of the public interest? We reviewed the seven criteria in the statute for public interest. Okay. And, and what were your findings with respect to that? We found that the in areas that were not OFW, we found that it was uh, not contrary to the public interest. For the small area that was within an outstanding Florida water in this area, we found that it was clearly in the public interest. Okay, and the small area, can you tell me where that was located? The um, crossing at the Santa Fe River included some minor temporary impacts. At the, those are the only impacts in the outstanding Florida water. Okay, thank you. Did the department prepare a technical document, technical review document discussing this evaluation of the project? We did. And you have binder 12 still there? Is it under? Oh, oh yeah. Yes, it is. Could, could you turn to Joint Exhibit 9? Yes. Is that the technical review document prepared by you and your, your folks? It is. Can you briefly walk us through the factors that we're considered in this technical review document? This contains a, a basic analysis of what what the impacts were to the project, all wetland impacts um, that went through the car, potential car feature impacts. It goes through analysis of the secondary impacts that were assessed. Um, it, the, 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 what the the applicant went through for to address uh, elimination and reduction of impacts. Um, it goes through an analysis of the mitigation plan and uh, a cumulative impact analysis and a statement regarding the state lands authorization. After um, performing the review of the uh, permit application under using the criteria in the applicant's handbook. Did the department reach a conclusion about whether or not the permit should be issued or denied? Yes, we concluded that they had provided reasonable assurance that they um, met the criteria for issuance of an ERP. With respect to the uh, authorization to use state lands, did the department evaluate whether or not that should be granted? We did. And what was the department's conclusion with respect to that? We felt that the applicant provided the materials needed to be granted a public easement. And uh, can you pull out, or actually you still have 12 there, would you look at Joint Exhibit 10? Can you tell me what Joint Exhibit 10 is? That's the 
consolidated notice of intent to issue an environmental resource permit and easement to use sovereign storage land. Okay. And that permit contains all of the, all of the uh, description of the project and conditions under which the work is to be performed? Yes. Okay. Uh, with respect to, to uh, in, with respect to reduction, you said that the Sable Trail did engage in efforts to reduce or eliminate uh, impacts on wetlands, is that correct? Correct. Right. And all impacts, adverse impacts on wetlands were mitigated for? Correct. Uh, I don't have any other questions. Documents to our online application system um, to insert every email separately. It's very difficult for staff to find the documents that we need, so we keep a local copy of emails. You get hundreds of emails about a particular project. And the specific one with the attachments, you just said it's not to include the attachments. The attachments are in the record. Okay, they're in the record now, but they weren't prior to. No, that's your complaint. You were saying something about you had a local file? Right. Uh, my, yes, my local, our drive at our office is where the, those emails were and those documents held. Okay. There is no specific <coughs> time frame for which we have to upload documents onto our website. Okay. And then as far as reasonable assurances that there wasn't an adverse public interest impact, how did you feel, what were the assurances made by Sable Trail that specifically in the Swanee River crossing, that this would not be an adverse public interest? What do you mean by adverse public interest? That's not an adverse criteria. impact on the public interest. Well, I, I'll go through the criteria with you if you're interested in looking at 373414. Um, in determining whether an activity is in or over surface waters or wetlands as delineated, in 373-421 and is regulated under this part and is not contrary to the public interest or is clearly in the public interest, the governing board of the department shall consider and balance the following criteria. And it goes into seven criteria. So if we would balance for the Swanee River crossing whether it was not contrary, those seven criteria would be used to balance whether it was not contrary to the public interest. Not clear yet. Right. Not so that's true. So you weighed everything, you weighed that there were special species there, that's criteria number two. Correct. We relied on um, recommendations from our Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission to address those issues. Were you aware of any specific karst, a limestone um, geology <coughs> in that Swan River crossing? Yes. And you believe that that mitigation plan Care of that? I relied on our experts at the FGS to make that determination as outside my scope. And why did the department decide to avoid the liquid <coughs> and 
have the crossing on the open salon. Sable Trail had made that determination on the department. Okay. Do you know why they made that determination? I, I think they spoke to that earlier. They had several design criteria. I'm sure it impacts the car's features or what are the considerations. I'm not sure of all of the considerations. And is this permit because it's a larger pipe than usual, 36 inches? <coughs> previously issued a permit, an ERP for a pipe this size? We have issued previous ERPs for pipelines of this size. Are you familiar with the geology report that was filed by David Brown? Well, if you're not familiar with it, I guess I shouldn't ask you about it. Um, we'll move on then. And else? Oh, this particular document, let me find it. The title of this one, it is Petitioner's Exhibit D as in Dog, B as in Boy. And it has Florida Department of Environmental Protection at the top.
Frederick, you were asked uh, to just, just some questions on cross-examination about the uh, public interest factors. Yes. There are seven of them. You're familiar with those. So the first of those factors is whether the activity would adversely affect the public health, safety, or welfare of the property. Uh, did you consider that factor? We did. And, and what was your determination with respect to how that factor weighed on the public? Our determination that the rule would not going to no adverse e impacts on uh, health, safety, and welfare. Okay. The second was whether activity will adversely affect the conservation of fish and wildlife, including danger uh, and threatened species, uh, or their habitat. The third one is whether activity will adversely affect navigation or the flow of water or cause harmful erosion or shelving. Uh, the department felt that since the, the majority of the pipeline, is, well, the pipeline is underground, it will not cause any adverse impacts to navigation or flow of water. With respect to whether the activity will adversely affect the fishing or recreational values or marine productivity in the vicinity of the activity, what, what did you determine with respect to that? There will be no adverse impact. Uh, whether the activity will be temporary or permanent? We consider that the majority of the impacts are temporary in nature of the pipeline. That was a factor. With respect to uh, any permanent impacts, would would there be mitigation provided for this? Yes, mitigation was provided. Whether the activity will, will adversely affect or enhance significant historical and archaeological resources? Yes, we, we considered that and, and relied upon information from our Division of Historical Resources at the Department of State and found that there was going to be no adverse impact. And then the last one is the condition, current condition and relative value of functions being performed by areas affected by the proposed activity current condition and relative values of the wetlands were considered during the process um, and evaluation of the um, ecological functions of each wetland and those were addressed in the mitigation plan. So those were, uh, were uh, looked at through the UMAM process and uh, mitigation was provided for those as well? Correct. You were... Sorry, I was going to ask to recross. Uh, I'm not quite finished. You were asked uh, about Joint Exhibit 2, the, the CARS, uh, you read some of the CARS language into the record? Yes. Let me ask you, were there changes made to the, um, the corridor of the pipeline after this uh, REI went out? Yes, there were changes to the corridor. That's all I have. before you, I have a question for you. Um, you know, a lot of people are here because they're worried about the swan getting adversely affected. The, uh, I'm worried because I love the Swanee River. And uh, so the, you and the other witnesses so far have made it pretty dry so far. But uh, I guess what I'm, I'm asking is, you care to make sure, and you felt sure that on your watch this wasn't going to happen. Based that they gave you enough information to make you feel confident that no permanent harm would result. I feel they did. We relied on FGS, which are our experts in geology at the department, 
um, and I felt if they were satisfied that, that, they had, that Sable Trail had provided reasonable assurance that the construction of a pipeline would not have adverse impacts. I've relied on that. We have issued other pipelines crossing these sensitive water bodies. We've never had any large problems. Including the Swanee? Uh, I, I don't know about the Swanee, but certainly we, we, we permitted a 36 inch pipeline under the Santa Fe River, and there was no problem. I love the sound <laughs> <laughs> And so do we, I assure you. All right. It's almost four.